Welcome to TV Burp, the show that skims the cream off the TV milk and forces it into your tummy through a funnel. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Osborne claims some of the Osborne's TV show was faked up. Sharon, where's the f***ing <laughs> John? I told you no more f***ing animals in the... Sorry, look, I, I, I can't see. Can you bring it in a bit? I can't quite... Right. Sorry, we'll, we'll go from the... We'll go from the f***ing dog, all right. <laughs> Unless Dennis's family welcome him home. <laughs> <laughs> now let's scotch these David Beckham internet rumours once and for all. The fact is, whatever you've heard about David Beckham in the internet, he has not, I repeat, has not worked out how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bex is still turning on his computer, he then turns the brightness up and uses it as a light. <laughs> yeah. He's still using it as a light. <laughs> the bill now, is it me or are the pub signs getting more realistic? <laughs> <laughs> and to make it easier for ITV viewers to spot the bent copper with the drug problem, the producers of the bill have put in a little clue to help you. I haven't seen you for a while. I've been in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> They put an arrow in. Yeah, they put a big arrow in. Oh, I must just vote. <laughs> Let me just, uh... Hello, pop stars arrivals. Yes, yes, I I'd like to vote for Javine, please. Yeah, Javine. Uh, or Sarah, whatever. Sarah. <laughs> Javine. Uh, poor old Mr. Wright, though. Turned down by his final choice. Um, after a lot of soul searching, it, it's just not happening for me. Um, and that's, that's my gut feeling. You prat. <laughs> you were supposed to whittle it down to one, not none. <laughs> the good news is, he's found someone he can finally find true happiness with. Yes, she's a little older, and like him, has royal connections. <laughs> she must never be queen. <laughs> the meteorological office today warned of more flash floods. The fact is, the Red Sea is much too deep for any wind to divide it. Yeah, it's getting pretty bad in East Sussex now. <laughs> As BBC News anchor man Jeremy Bowen found out. And while he's drying out, they've replaced him. Yeah, we had a sneak preview of the new boy on Emmerdale. Hi! Here's Richard Whiteley off Countdown, okay. look. Charming lady, as yourself. As my wife, you're chatting up, you slimy, self-satisfied slug. <laughs> Who says current affairs on TV are dumbing down? <laughs> oh, I'm just getting some information in. Uh, some news regarding the trade deficit. Uh, we go now to Treasury spokesman Chris England, who is with ITN political editor Roy Walker. <laughs> well, Minister, what is your assessment of the current crisis? Well, Roy, uh, Gordon's initial forecasts seem to have been slightly out, but it does really reflect a slowing down in the global economy, and, of course, we're fighting 18 years of Tory neglect in our public services. Mm, it's a good answer. <laughs> but it's not right. <laughs> Emmerdale, though, eh? Hmm. What's Eric Pollard up to now Gloria's gone up to Westminster? Well, he's taken over from Michael Flatley in Riverdance. <laughs> Happy now, are we? And of course, this week, Emily and Paddy got back off holiday. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Oh, Emily, no. The thought of dragging this thing all the way up there, should have dropped it off first. Didn't you know it's got wheels? <laughs> what did you tell me? I thought you liked carrying it. <laughs> it's not just got wheels, it's got a powerful diesel engine as well, by the sound of things. Get it the yeah, drive to the airport on your suitcase. <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up looking like they're cardboard boxes, though, eh? <laughs> and on Bootylicious on Channel 4 this week, Dr Roberts outlined the risks of sitting on a wicker chair with no pants on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all very well, Doctor, but shouldn't you be at work? <laughs> <laughs> Another expert on the female rear got very excited. 
my favourite Swahili word, in fact, perhaps my favourite word in any language, is a simple little noun uh, that's spelled W O W O W O. And if you write it in a curvy hand on the page, it's like six naked bottoms sitting on a bench, which is quite pertinent because it actually means a woman with a well endowed backside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you close your eyes and imagine a big bottom and what it would say to you, what would it say? It would say, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, forgive me, but I think it's more likely to say... <laughs> You're watching ITV1. <laughs> of course, the best person to ask what noise a giant bottom would make is Les Dennis, of course, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? I prefer Melinda Messenger when she was in the banana splits. Which leads us to our TV Big Brother Highlights of the Week. TV Big Brother Highlight of the Week. It's over! Here's an odd thing, when Sue, off the bread advert on Big Brother, was booted out of the house, there was all this sort of cheering noise and barriers to keep the people back, but I couldn't see anyone making any noise. <laughs> Where's all the noise coming from? This is what it really sounded like. <laughs> Meanwhile, things continue to go well on pop stars. Bop, bop, doo <laughs> As the young hopefuls slug it out in the tough world of the music business. <laughs> there goes Amy. Yes. Oh. Oh, there's Chris. Chris goes. And... Javine. <laughs> Fantastic. fantastic. We love you. That is, that is the standard. <laughs> it is a cruel show, though. I just think that when Davina breaks the bad news to the kids, she just prolongs the agony just a little bit too much. The singer going home is... <laughs> Amy. Bob, Bob, you are. Pete Waterman is looking good these days, but he is, he's getting on in years, isn't he? Let's face it. Mm. He's on his third face transplant. Mm? <laughs> he's so old, he remembers when lizards were fish. That's how old he is. <laughs> he's so old, he remembers a time when if someone struck a match, he'd go, ooh, fire stick, huh? Don't come near him, man. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't always so. No, once upon a time, long ago, Pete was young, vibrant, and in a show called The Hitman and Her. <laughs> And he's judging them. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite was always Hazel, the lovely pregnant Irish girl who was booted off for lying about her age. You know when you filled in the form? Yeah. It's like a release form. Yeah. You put your age on there. Yeah. And you put 23. Yeah. We know that you're not 23. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, people want Pete Waterman to lie about his age because who's got the time to write all them noughts? <laughs> oh, I wonder how she's getting on, though, eh? Hazel. She must have had that baby by now. Hello, Harry. <laughs> Man alive! It's Hazel, off pop stars, the rivals! <laughs> Haven't you had that baby yet? Not yet, Harry. How many months pregnant are you? Fourteen. Fourteen months pregnant? 
That's impossible. Maybe he's got something to do with my age. Well, how old are you, darling? Uh, 17. Get out of here. <laughs> You know, what with pensions going down the pan and property prices on the up, I rather cleverly bought myself a, a rental property, yes, a little while ago, <laughs> and I let it to Queenie. She's a lovely old lady, and, uh, blimey, is that the date? I'd better get over there and pick up the rent. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah? What, what do you want? <laughs> Who the hell are you? Uh, are you from BT? Because what it is, you know, we're going to settle up at the end of the month that we just haven't been paid yet. I'm the landlord, Mush. <laughs> <sighs> Man alive! Where did you not spring from? Posters? What? Bluntack? You know that leaves a mark. <laughs> so are you the real landlord then? Yeah, what's of it? Well, um, this gas heat is a bit dodgy. After spin on for a while, we all get a bit drowsy. You get drowsy? Well, let's have a look. That all seems to be in working order. I mean, I haven't got the sort of money to go throwing around after new gas fires. I'll put it on for you now, right? If you start to get drowsy, open a window, like we're used to. Anyway, where's Queenie? <laughs> Oi, you. Who lives here? Uh, Pete Waterman. <laughs> when was the last time you saw him? Um, about a week ago. Well, don't you think he might have fallen down and be unable to get up or something? <laughs> Who cares? Yes? Yeah, I've got a delivery for Mr Waterman. I think it might be a bit late for that. Well, I've got 20 yards of truck to leave. Well, uh, I'll get him to call you when he comes round, all right. <laughs> ah, Queenie, there you are. Oh, hello, Harry. How many times have I told you, no gentleman friends back to the accommodation? But the pension's gone all to cook. I needed the money. Subletting in open breach of contract. But I'm getting 150 quid each from the Mary. How much you say? Like I say, you're in breach of contract. I know where to go. Well, try the council. If you hurry, you'll still make it down the town hall. <laughs> I'm not a charity. <laughs> Right, lads, let's have your rinse. Lads? <laughs> oh, well, looks like the girls might be in with a chance after all. <laughs> let's get down the bookies. <laughs> of course, since filming that, Chris has been booted out. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. Uh, now. What about all this argy-bargy between the telly chefs, though, eh? Mm, Gordon Ramsay called Jamie a name, Anthony Worrell Thompson pushed Gary into some nettles. Mm. <laughs> and, De and Delia held Nigella's head down the bog during break. <laughs> See, me, I like Ainsley and I like Gary. As for who's best, well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> for, 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 for food fight! <laughs> Cold Feet star John Thompson is back with his girlfriend. <laughs> ugh, ugh, it's a grape in with my spiders. Then <laughs> you hate it when that happens. Well, I have been enjoying the Crocodile Hunter's Diaries with Steve Owen. <laughs> Not that one! <laughs> No, no, no. This Steve Owen. This bloke is very naughty and quite a handful to catch. <laughs> Here's Steve trying to catch a kangaroo. And it's important, as he points out, to cause the roo the least amount of stress. Try not to stress him out too much. Got him by the tail. Wes's got to get in there and tackle him, take him to ground. Oh, look at the claws digging into me arm. Trouble is, we've got to get a tub. Go quick, Wes, and go hard. <laughs> but get him in a tarp, wrap him up, so he can't hurt himself or us. Yeah. Keep the stress to a minimum. Wrist him to the ground, wrap him in a tarp. Yeah. Here's Steve and Co. catching a crocodile. <laughs> Somebody get a tarp! Somebody get a tarp! 
<laughs> That's the Crocodile Hunters' diaries. But, but what do the crocodiles think? Well, I've got hold of one of the crocodiles' diaries. Yeah, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Where are we? Yes. OK. Um, Monday, December the 1st. Weather sunny, chicken for lunch, uh, laid around in water most of the day, watched EastEnders on TV. Whatever happened to Wellard? That's a good point. <laughs> Tuesday the 2nd. Uh, got up early, fish for breakfast. A uh, strange man throws himself on top of me <laughs> and rolls me up in a tarp. <laughs> Why did he do that? <laughs> well... Which brings us to our TV Highlight of the Week. TV Highlight of the Week. And a little bit of advice from Tricia. As the old Rolling Stones song goes, you can't get what you want until you actually say what you want. <laughs> now, we can't get clips of EastEnders. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll kill that Greg Dyke if I see him. I'll plant one on his fat face. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's, it's cruel, isn't it? So, to let you know what's happening in it, we've had to commission one of those courtroom artists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not ideal. Here we are. This is what... <laughs> this is what happened on, on tonight's East Enders. Here we are. There's uh, Lynn in the cafe, look, and there's Barry coming in. Uh, he's ordering something. He's Natalie watching. Oh, uh, he's saying, uh, Phil is a cold-blooded murderer. Oh, uh, Peggy comes in. Oh, she's not too happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what have we got? <laughs> oh, oh. There's Jim Branner. He's having a bit of a funny turn in the gym. <laughs> it's all right, Robbie's there. Robbie's there. Um, and that woman who's sort of, you think maybe he's going to have a fit. Don't let Dot find out. Don't let Dot find out. <laughs> and uh, then later on, it's Phil and Peggy enjoying a nice, quiet drink in the Vic. And uh, who comes in? Sonia gives him a right old mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like watching the real thing. Probably like me. You like the soaps, so you want to read what the characters on the soaps are reading. But you just don't seem to be able to find these titles on the shelves of most ordinary news agents. For instance, on Emmerdale, you want to read Mum's World. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to know what's going through Emily's mind. Or you want to get the, the latest copy of Fizz. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. What is Fizz magazine? Is it a, a Hello-style entertainment magazine? Or, or is it the carbonated drinks industry's in-house magazine? <laughs> See, if it's EastEnders, you want to read Wizzo like Stephen. <laughs> I'll kill that Greg Dyke, that bald-headed freak! <laughs> Young Steve there, he basically likes comics or magazines he can easily cut out the letters of. <laughs> Just time for a roundup of some of the glossy magazines. Um, Women's Weekly, basically happy and healthy, it's a nice one. Uh, Fizz <laughs> magazine, <laughs> where Soda Stream went wrong, <laughs> it's a nice one. And uh, Mum's World, they're going with a nice big picture of Hazel. Uh, <laughs> some pop stars there. Pop there. <laughs> I've had it at last, Harry. <laughs> I thought I'd see daylight. <laughs> I don't want to give up. I don't want to give in. Uh, everybody say. Hip hop beats. <laughs> I do believe. 